what's up YouTube, this is Dan Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm going to show you how to change your rear brake pads and your brake rotors on a 2001 Toyota Avalon. Now keep in mind this brake disc or rotor is a disc drum combo. This also has the parking brake inside here. We'll take a look at that as well once we get this off. The first thing I like to do is push the caliper piston back in so you've got more room for the new pads. Before you do that, it's a good idea to pop the hood and verify the level of brake fluid in the master cylinder so that when you do this, you're not going to overflow that spill brake fluid everywhere. If it's full, uh, you can pull some of it out with a turkey baster. I already looked at this one when I did the other side, and there's still enough room for me to push this in and uh, not spill that. But the easiest way I found to push these in is with a just a little small blade screwdriver come in through here this little opening here and then just pry that you can see the the whole caliper moving what you're doing is wedging between the pad and the little frame or body of the caliper right here and you just pull that sometimes you got to reposition a couple times you can even come in over here on the side a little bit if needed so just pull that towards you until it stops and that typically means the caliper piston is pushed all the way back in. Sometimes you still need to push it in further with the caliper compression tool. But uh, I think we'll be okay on this one. Now we can loosen and remove these two slide pins. And those are a 14 millimeter. I'm using this long handled socket wrench here. So this is like a slide pin bolt. Okay, so once you get it past the threads, just pull on it and it'll come out. And we'll get those cleaned up and re-greased before we put them back in. Now these are different, the top and the bottom. Let's see if I can pull out the bottom one too. It's kind of stuck in there. There we go. The bottom one has got this little rubber bushing, so just keep that in mind before you put them back in. Okay, and then we can lift the caliper off. And uh, here, this is pretty lightweight caliper. We can just kind of let that sit over here. As long as you're not dropping it and yanking on that brake line, it's usually fine. Just gonna pull out the old brake pads. Screwdriver helps sometimes, just take those off. And they're not completely worn down, but they're starting to make some weird noises, so I just figured might as well get them changed. You can see this little squealer or noisemaker. Not quite touching, but it's uh, it's getting close. It's almost worn down to the surface of the pad. Now before we can take off the rotor, we just need to take off this caliper support bracket. And they made it easy on us. That's the same size as uh, the caliper slide pin bolts. It's uh, also a 14 millimeter. There's two little bolts in here, and they're pretty tight. So a long-handed or a long-handled ratchet does help. You may have to use a breaker bar. They're kind of recessed, and so you probably won't be able to use a regular wrench or uh, you know box end or open end wrench you'll have to have a socket that's what that looks like and we will be reusing those so just set those aside and then as you're taking out the other one it's a good idea to hold on to this caliper support bracket so it doesn't fall side now we can just take the rotor off now sometimes they're stuck on there like this one sometimes you can put some uh, some bolts in these threaded holes which this does not have the threaded holes so I'm just gonna grab a, a hammer and tap on it and uh, hopefully break it loose from this hub I just grabbed a little mini sledge here Sorry about your ears there, but uh, that broke it loose. And you know, it's a, sometimes a good idea to take a look at the inside and make sure there wasn't any issues, but uh, this looks fine. 
sometimes these parking brake shoes get so worn down that they'll uh, they'll go to metal to metal and they'll groove in the inside of that uh, and these are pretty thin but I'm not going to change them I'm just going to clean them up and, uh, just going to put a little box box underneath here to catch all the crud Now before I put the, the new uh, brake disc, rotor, drum combo, uh, I'm also going to hit that with uh, brake clean on the inside and all the, all the braking surfaces. Now when we put this rotor back on, now that it's all cleaned up, you want to line up this hole, the larger hole, which is where you can adjust these uh, brake shoes outward with this hole right here. And this does usually come with a plug. The old one, it was missing, so I'm just going to leave it off. But uh, you just want to line that up so that you can still have access through that hole to adjust it. You can see this does have the threaded holes that I was talking about. So next time, uh, if this gets stuck on there, you can just put a couple bolts in there and sometimes that will help. Uh, help take it off. The other thing I'm probably going to do is tighten the parking brake ever so slightly. The brake is off right now and I'm just going to tighten this until I can feel the shoes touching the inside of this drum. So it's just a little star and you just got to turn it in this case. Feels like upward is the right direction. The parking brake shoes barely touching on the inside here and that's about where i like to have them so it's it's a nice tight parking brake when you need it but uh it's it's not going to drag while you're driving so just enough to where you can barely feel it okay now we can put the caliper support bracket back on now a lot of brake pad kits will come with new these little pad retainer clips this one did not come with new ones so i am just going to clean these up and make sure that we've got enough brake grease on the inside edge of the brake pads so that they will move freely in there without the, without causing any wear or binding. And still just make sure that those are fully seated before we put it back together. Now I'm just going to hit these with a little dab of grease. Just trying to get a little bit of grease on the inside of each of these. It's kind of easier to do before putting this on because sometimes when you try to do this you might get a little bit of this brake grease on the rotor which you definitely don't want. And now we can put this back on. Get those started by hand. And we can get those nice and tight. Now it is only a 14 millimeter bolt head, so don't go too crazy on this. <clears throat> Just double check your manual on the torque spec on these. Now on the old pads, uh, you can see that the inside pad had the noise maker on the bottom. So I like to just match wherever they had them. So this is the, uh, the little noise maker. And you just gotta just clip it on just like that so it can go on the same direction same orientation but before I put these in I am gonna get a little bit of this uh, I'll show you what I'm using the Sil glide brake grease use it in all, almost all of my brake videos and they still haven't sent me any maybe one day the uh, the makers of this stuff will see one of my videos and send me some but uh, for right now I'll just keep buying it and of course I'll put a link in the description where you can where you can get it to. Same thing, little dab of the silk light on the back here. A little bit at the ends as well. These these little ends or the ears of the brake pad. That's what slides inside here and you just don't want any binding there. So you kind of start at an angle. Uh, let's try that again. 
Now the other thing before we put this back on, I like to inspect the caliper boot here and uh, sometimes I'll just take a little bit of that brake grease and just just kind of wipe it on the inside of that. It, it almost keeps that rubber from drying out or cracking. This one's actually in pretty good shape, but uh, sometimes they're real dirty. Whoops. I just got a little bit of that grease on the edge of the pad here and I just like to wipe that off so it doesn't get, uh, get down there on the surface. Now we can put the caliper back on. And this one probably could have been pushed in a little bit more, but sometimes you just use the pad itself to kind of twist that on and then get that lined up. And then here's our slide pins. Remember the one with the uh, rubber end here goes in the bottom. And just really just wiping this down and putting some new grease on it is usually enough. Um, I don't really have the best method of cleaning out the inside. Sometimes I'll put them in, you know, once or twice and get more of that dirtier grease on there. Kind of trying to clean it out, but it uh, doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be that big of a deal, you know, as long as you get most of that crud wiped down and some new grease on it. So here's the same stuff, the, the Sil Glide. About that much is enough. And just kind of slather that around on the, the slide pin side here. And put it back in. Same with the bottom one. Again, sometimes I'll just put it in there a couple times and try to get some of the the old dirty stuff out of there. This one wasn't really that bad. Sometimes there's a lot of crud in there and probably would make more sense to clean it out, but uh, this one's just not terrible. So just a little bit of that grease around that slide pin. And then we'll put it back into place. It doesn't hurt to get a little bit of grease on these slide pin boots here too. Keeps them from drying out and cracking. And we could just get these all snug. And same with the torque on these. I don't know what it is, but uh, if I get a chance, I'll look that up and put it in there for you. I just like to make them snug and just not overdo it. And you're done. Just remember to step on the brake pedal once or twice to push that caliper piston back out, uh, pressing those brake pads up against the rotor where they need to be, uh, and double check your master cylinder uh, brake fluid level before you head out as well. Uh, remember to get everything torqued down per spec. Hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. Um, I will put a link in the description to the uh, sail glide here. Also to the brakes that I used. Uh, this was a kit that came with rotors and pads uh, that I got on Amazon. Pretty impressed with these. I used them up front on a different vehicle and they're, they're working great. This was a kit that came with the pads and the rotors. Uh, really, you can't beat the price as well. So I'll make sure that you guys get the, the right link to that. But uh, thanks so much for watching and good luck.